All right. <gasps> oh! Look at Whiskey that? Paul. Oh my god. That was a what? hiccup burst. Oh, simultaneous just hiccup the burst. Worst start ever. Ow. You know how many people watch this on their lunch break? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. Hey, of all the people who complain about like noises and smells. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. For you to be screwing with Yippie's lunch break, what are you doing? I know, sorry. Okay, all right. Sorry. Uh, this is a gift from Magnificent Bastard Daniel Thomas's. Daniel Thomas is you magnificent bastard. <laughs> He also is a benevolent bastard because he sent in that Woodenville triple barrel blended whiskey that we did the other day. Daniel Thomas, you benevolent bastard. Okay, uh, really quick though, really quick though. Yeah. Uh, I did the thing. And it's light? It's pretty light. Yeah, yeah, so you wanna know why? Why, why is there so much damage done? We're right here, people. We're right yeah. here. I have an explanation for you. You ready? Because I knew you would bring this up. So, we just did a sherry class with Eric Waite. You did a dent, is what you did. Yeah, no. You did. No, 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 no. You gotta let me finish. Dent. You gotta let, you got, I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> Taylor, I'm gonna let you finish. Oh, really, do something again. Uh, so, Eric Waite yeah. came back and taught Eric Waite Whiskey Studies, yeah, YouTube yeah. channel, yeah. He taught a sherry class. It's one of my favorite things that, uh, that uh, he's done. I mm -hmm. love that class. And he brought the exact same whiskey that Daniel Thomas has donated. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. So Daniel Thomas's bottle is unopened mm -hmm. and upstairs in the vault. Because we already had the exact same bottle opened. So what I need from you mm. is to, over the course of the next eight to 10 minutes, mm -hmm. verbatim give me Eric Waite's presentation on the sherry. Okay. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Uh, but, but I can't tell you about the sherry from this whiskey. But I thirst for knowledge. <laughs> yeah, that's not what it's going to be. Okay, I, so... I care hard about it. This is a Spain It's important to me. Distillery. Keeps me up at night, looking at the ceiling. Spain. Whiskey from Spain. I hear you. Right? But I'm so this is a guy, my love of knowledge because I don't think I can enjoy this. I don't, I don't This know is it. a guy with a, a massive amount of experience. Uh, guys, uh, Navazos and Palazzi who were wine guys and spirits connoisseurs and decided to source whiskey yeah. and finish it in wine casks, right? Now, here's what's weird about this. this we're gonna compare it to a classic sherry this cask. This is crazy, man. Because this is one of the rarest sherry expression finishes you're, okay. you will ever find. Okay. There's maybe less than a dozen currently done on the planet. Right. And it's Palo Cartado sherry. Why do I feel like I'm well outside of whiskey with this nose? Because it's Palo Cartado whiskey. Okay. Right? It's a very strong sherry, or sherry. Palo Cartado sherry. Okay. sherry. Sure, yeah. Right? So there's all these categories of sherry. Yeah. Right? So um, certain like Fino and Amontillado, yeah. they develop with a, a floor. It's called a floor or a, uh, on the top, right? Which is a yeast layer. And that's how they develop as they, as they, um, okay. as they sit. Is it in a... Barrel or a vat? Or? It's a vat. Yeah, a vat. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that it protects it from outside yeast and oxidation. Okay. As that layer develops, like a pudding skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if it sits long enough, then right. it develops patiently and becomes a fino sherry or an amontillado. Yeah. Um, if you have, uh, if it starts to lose the floor layer. Yeah. And and uh, exposing it to potential oxidation. Yeah. Then you end up with a Palo Cortado. Which is like, oh, oh, this isn't ready yet, right? But we can't keep it here any longer because it's losing its floor layer. So they add in fortified spirits. Okay, take the proof up to seventeen. This is plus where, percent because this is one of the most obvious, strong, intense influences. Well, but you won't let me finish. That takes it closer to the Oloroso category. Okay. And so this is going to be closer to the proof level impact of right. uh, or density mm -hmm. of an Oloroso or a, not, not a PX, mm -hmm. right? But it's technically Palo Cortado, which There's, is a failed, a fa not really a failed, but uh, a Fino a, or an Amontillado that didn't go right. It's a no shit. It yeah. didn't go according to plan, so you quickly proof it up. To, and then you let it oxidize like it would if it was an Oloroso. So there's a lot of things going on in the nose. Yes. And there is, gosh, everything from a creamy quality to maybe some, uh, maybe like uh, some type of dried fruit, like maybe, I don't know, it's not a raisin. There's a minerality to this nose. This is an amaretto pound cake to me. Oh, I see what you the did. The almond liqueur. Where it's just the liqueur has gone through the breadiness. Yeah. Amaretto pound cake on top of a malt. 
rich malt layered base. So it smells delicious. It does. No, there's a there's but a very really sherry heavy frustrating, unhelpful thing I'm going to say mm. because they're so very different. Mm -hmm. But there is something in here that I also find it's rare to find it, but I also find in Brickletti Black Art. Okay, and I think it's the minerality of that. There is a layer of this where it's like kind of just hard mineral notes, but it's just swept up in obvious dense sweet flavors too. You know what? Whenever you have like a really mineral forward wine, mm -hmm. it's closer to a really like I had a wine uh, six seven months ago that was grown um, near a volcano. And okay. All, yeah, and you got the mineral heavy, super or the, that, mineral heavy. That, uh, yeah. yeah, the the ash and the volcano and all that, uh, the, the the soil around there. I'm really excited to try this, to drink this. If you guys see this whiskey on the shelves, it's it's getting more accessible. Not necessarily the Palo Cortado. Yeah. But uh, they they do good releases. Is that a? Gosh, my wife got these little weird dried, dark fruity things from Whole Foods. Ah. That I just snack on next to the bed. It's not a fig. Right. Hmm. I don't know. Oh. How is that? That is really good. It's dry. Yeah, there's the minerality kicks in. Yeah, and there's a sort of a hole. You would expect the mid palate of this to just get dense and rich and like fudge like. Do you get candied dry fruits? Yeah. Yeah. But you would expect Candy almost a fudge like dry. density. Yeah. And there, there's no density. It's sweet. It's very dark. And it's rich and it's, uh, it's, Acidic and yeah. a little bit tannic, mm -hmm. but there's no heavy mid palate density that I would expect from the density of that nose. So, this is one of these whiskeys that is simultaneously very pleasant, mm -hmm. also a funky adventure. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get in a funky adventure and you just strap on your big boy pants because you're not looking to be coddled with easy, familiar flavors. It's mm. going to be some off the beaten path flavors. These are off the beaten path flavors. Funky adventure, but so nice. This is as sweet as that peach brandy finished one that we had. Yeah, but that but was... it tastes totally different. Right, and I like it. It's it's more of dessert, like a rich. Actually, was, it's more like having a cherry dessert. There was much more of in that peach brandy finished corn whiskey. Peach. There was much more of also the barrel tannins were a lot more just yeah. directly bitter. The barrel in this is soft. Yeah. It's a soft touch. Ooh, it's delicious. Ooh. It's cask strength too. Okay. 52.5% yeah, alcohol. Yeah, yeah. It's just malt whiskey out of Spain. Damn Spain. Bringing it. Holy hell. Now they're sourcing the malt. From Scotland? Probably, but okay. I, don't, they, I, I don't know on this one specifically. Mm. At least I thought they were. Oh, no, no, it's not. That, the, the earliest ones that I had from them, they had so sourced like Spain? Japan. This is distilled and sourced in Spain. The that's, malt is. That's very exciting. Yeah. Because the moment right. whenever you see a country that you don't typically equate with whiskey production do something amazing. Right. It's like, oh, oh yeah. There's, you know, there's a scene kind of emerging yeah. there. Uh, obviously, that happened in Japanese whiskey a long time ago. And I but love that they're New Zealand, the wine. Australia, there's some Scandinavian countries, I think, that are doing some cool stuff. How they age stuff and get any flavor, I have no idea. See, I love that uh, historically wine countries yeah. are delving oh. into whiskey yeah. because they're bringing a whole new level to the whiskey wine combo interaction. Yeah, we're starting to see a lot of that uh, experience from wine being translated into whiskey in California right now. And I now. love it. Yeah, I love of, it. A lot of the whiskey coming out of yeah, California. Yeah, the Savage dudes, Savage and uh, Cook, I think. Or yeah, some of them. man. Doing good whiskey. So good. So, uh, since you already you have another bottle of this. You said you had another bottle of this, though. Right. We have the one that Daniel Thomas right, so. gave us. No. You're always trying to take whiskey. This is mint for the vault. Let's be honest. This. This is nothing. If we've already established this. That's just because I'm this. rearranging things in the vault right now. You rearranged them in the back of my car. <laughs> AKA reject. I love this channel for hidden gems, like how this episode maybe do some Googling to find the headline. You have no idea how hard it is to get a hamster drunk. <laughs> I went and looked it up and it's a totally a headline. And that's amazing. <laughs> I, I presented to Brianna, I was like, hey, I think we figured out your spirit animal, right? And she goes, oh, what is it? And I was like, well, hamster. it's a hamster. She, she wasn't enthusiastic. She wasn't feeling it. Like, 
That would be an amazing. I can't imagine why she, not. She didn't identify with the hamster. Yeah, well. Yeah. Ob. It's not very majestic. Ob. What? But is Brianna majestic? Yeah. <laughs> kind of, uh, she shy. is delightful, but she's not <laughs> majestic. majestic. <laughs> Ob. Juan. You see what they did there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that. Juan. Juan. Ob. Juan. Uh, I love these doofuses, but WTF is up with the ridiculous gold medallion. <laughs> you know, it, so I was going to say, I think it's been a while uh, since yeah. we talked about the fact that this is the ridiculous, absurdly dramatic medallion that we give to graduates of the Whiskey Sommelier School. He is. Of which we were supposed to have level one right now. Right, yeah. And we're not doing it right yet. But the next one's in May, so, and we rarely talk about this. So, Mr. Flav. Yeah, Flavor Flav. When we were talking about this, I was mm -hmm. like, I don't know, man. I don't think going white face is cool, but you do you. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, whiskey level one, the next one is in May if you uh, want to come oh, join us. Oh, I got us. it. This is it. Your Flavor Flav. I overpronounce it? Yeah, Flavor Flav, because Flavor. Just cancel this. Now. I just do favors for everybody. I like the hell out of this. Me too. This is, I'm so glad this is mine now. <laughs> Thank you. How often do I take whiskeys home? These aside. Oh, maybe twice, I think, as long as I've known you. Like zero. No, they were gifts. Oh, yeah. Like well, you took some actual gifts home. But most of those gifts are up in here if we don't have it in here. Yep. Because I'm a giver. Me too. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink with us. us.